one of my early recognition over a will lemon. He uh, came in one time and I was there with the grandma lemon and my friend Dick Bartholomew was a nephew. And Will Lemon came in and she said to him, How was your day? And he says, I had a great day. The grandpa Lemon had a great day. And I said, well, What'd you do? And he said, Well, I, I greased the horse and I burned down the barn. <laughs> and I was probably five or six years old. And that's really great. Well, what he meant was that he had greased the wagon and he had burnt the weeds around the barn. But as a, he was getting old and I remember as a child thing that was pretty funny. He said, I greased the horse and I burned down the barn. So that was a good day. <laughs> Anyway, I had a great life living at that. When I got to junior high, uh, I got involved with what was called the pentathlon. When I was in the seventh grade, I was too small. They wouldn't let me play in the pentathlon. Pentathlon was five events. You had a dash, 75-yard dash. You had a high jump and a broad jump. You had a five-pound shot put, and you had a basketball, and the basketball was a circle 10 feet in front of the basket. You started with a foul shot, and for two and a half minutes, you made as many baskets as you could. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. seventh grade, I was too small to do that, and I couldn't do it. In the eighth grade, they had Jay Gaislin, who won it the year before, and he was in my phys ed class, and Mr. Dudley had him show the basketball, and he made 22 of them in our classroom that day. And so little Candy raised his hand and said, could I try it? And Mr. Dudley let me try it, I made 27. So he said, well, I guess you're good enough that you can make it to the tournament on Saturday, which is a school tournament. And I remember going to that, and I took third place in that that day. I did well with the basketball because I was talented at that. I high jumped three feet high, I just jumped over the deal. And, but anyway, I got third place and I went to the region. In the meantime, I down in this corner over here, I built me a jumping bed and I found me a rock that was five pounds heavy and I, I practiced and I practiced and practiced. From that time on, I won the region, I went to the state, I won the next two years, I won all the school and all the regions. I set the state record in basketball with 39 now and then, in two minutes. And I high jumped five, five inches over my head. That was a real challenge. But I used to sit down here where I'd shot put or where I'd high jump. And I played like I was high jumping in front of 30,000 people get myself wrapped up to where I'm really high and then go over and try it. But I remember doing that for hours and hours and hours and uh, I really enjoyed it because you could see the progress that you made. The shot put on, I was in eighth grade, I shot it for about 21 or two feet. Two years later, I was going 65 feet and that got me a lot of points in that. But I had a lot of trophies and I had a lot of pins and they, they robbed us in Kansas City and took most of that stuff out of my hands. But anyway, that was a challenge. In the seventh grade, I got the cornet that Mr. Stratton has. That was oh, my Christmas when I was in the seventh grade. I, that's one present I remember ever getting, and I played the trumpet in, in that time, through college. I never had a birth certificate because I was born at home, and I was a junior in college before I ever had to produce a birth certificate. And they had to go back and get their church records and stuff to show that I was born at that time. Because I was joining in the Navy, and at that time, all the way through school and all the way through high school and junior high, we never had to have a birth certificate situation. In the summertime, I used to sleep out all the time, sleep out on the porches or out in the yard and stuff. The old winter ward up there, and they said where you were going to have a reception was our ward. And if you went downstairs in that chapel, there was a theater, like a, a theater with a stage. On Friday nights when I was young, they had movies at that theater. My dad would run the projector at times. Uh, on a Friday night, there was a time of year, I came home. And I slept, I slept outside on the lawn, just to the south side of our house. And I wasn't feeling very good that night. So the next morning, I wanted to go inside the house, and my older sister was waxing the floor in the kitchen. She wouldn't let me in. So I went out to my tent, and I shook all day long. That evening, Mother let me in, and I went to my upstairs bedroom on the south side there. And I was sleeping in that bedroom when, in the middle of the night, I got paralyzed. I couldn't move my legs. Like that. So I prayed a lot about it. I had a brother, Joe, that was in the west bedroom. He was woken up by the spirit. The spirit woke him up, and he came in and found me all paralyzed. This was on a Saturday night. <coughs> they got me up and took me downstairs. My dad, in the top of the cabinets, had some liquor, probably. Gave me something to kill the pain. 
They took me to the hospital Sunday night, and they took my appendix out. The appendix had ruptured, and I'd been there for two days with ruptured appendix. I went from 84 pounds down to 42 pounds in 10 days. I had the tubes coming out of my belly to drain all the infection out. It was in 1940. It was on my ninth birthday, so in 1945. Penicillin was a brand new drug at that time, and it saved my life because they pumped me full of penicillin every three or four hours. They would shoot me in the hips with the penicillin. But my mother thought I'd been eating green apples coming home from the ward. We'd come through the orchards on the way home <clears throat> on Friday night, but I hated green apples. I told mother I never ate green apples. But anyway, that was one of the experiences. And I didn't walk for from July until October before I could ever get on my feet and walk again. So that was one of my early experiences with medicine. With that penicillin was a brand new drug, and it saved my life. I, remember, I had infection all through my abdomen. It was ruptured for a couple days before that. I was taken care of. <clears throat> and when I was 12, I got a paper out. The Deseret News route had 206 papers. It was seven miles long. I started at 48th South on 13th East and all the way up 13th, up to 15th South, 39th, 27th East, back along 9th East, and then back down to 7th East and up 45th South with a few farmers. It took me two hours on a bicycle to deliver those. In those days, you had to collect all your money. They were $1.30 a month, so I had to collect from 206 people. That was a big job for a 12-year-old to go out and collect them. I found out that women never had the money, so I always went during dinner time when Dad was around, because they sometimes would have the money. And there's still people on that line that, that owe me money. <laughs> but I had to collect the money, and I had to pay the Desert News, and then I got anything that was left. I could make, if I collected most everything, I could make $25 a month. And so that's what I said. <clears throat> that was my first one. I was 14. One of the high councilmen was building onto our chapel, and I went up to him. And Orrin Woodbury was named for Woodbury Corporation. And I looked up and I said, Mr. Woodbury, I'd like to work for you. And a couple months later, he called me and offered me a job. From that time when I was 14 to the time I was 28 or 9 and got out of dental school, I was never unemployed. Every Saturday, every day I was working, I had a job my whole life. I was never unemployed from the time I was 14. The most I ever made was I started at a dollar an hour. And after 20 years, I got up to a dollar 85 an hour when I was working in Kansas City at the hospital. So I, but I was out of debt and I did have a job all the time. All the time through high school and stuff, I had a Saturday job and a couple evening jobs after school and stuff, and that's what I did. I used to come home from school, and at that time we sold the dairy and the cows, but we still had a cow and in the middle of the dairy barn, I had milked a cow. Her name was Bond. I had milked a cow and we had the chickens. We had chickens. We usually had a thousand baby chickens strapped. And so we'd have brooders. You'd have to come home from school and I'd go feed the chickens and I'd put diesel in the brooders. One of my stories that I could tell is I, I was always anxious to go out and play ball and stuff, so I. I Diesel was outside the feed room in a 50 or a 250 gallon barrel. And I would start it in the bucket and I would run in and feed the chickens and stuff. And I came out and the diesel had run over on the ground. And, oh, I was really felt bad because Dad would get really mad if I wasted that diesel. So I went back in the chicken coop and I ripped off a little bit of cloth off the shutters on the window, lit it in the brooder and took it out and dropped it in that little pan of diesel. Well, it started a big fire right next to the chicken coop. I jumped out and tried to throw some sand on it, but didn't seem any good. So that's that's a panic thing that you kids will remember when you get in panic. What do you do? I ran for mother. Mother came running down and she threw sand on it and stopped it. And by that time, the whole side of the city coop and sorry, let's go up to the rafters. I was never so happy when they tore that chicken coop down in there that <laughs> that was taken away. Mother said, "How did it start?" And of course, I said, "I don't have any idea. I was just in the chicken fire started." We had a, a chemist that lived in the house with the folks who ended up there. He came down and he came up with the idea that the cow had rubbed against it and the static electricity had started that fire and they jumped right on that. That was the answer. Yeah. Yeah. I never told my mother. What other confessions, Dad? I got a lot of confessions. She probably know me. But anyway, that was one. And after milking that cow one night, my mother called me and said, 
see have a friend named Mary Gendry. 